What's up, Fight Dialogue fans? This is Alger Gorner. Um, bringing back another interview. Uh, I know it's been a while. I am here with the pleasure of being with Bellator Featherweight, Jeremy Kennedy. How you doing, Jeremy? Good, man. How are you? I'm pretty good. Um, first of all, how have you been since, you know, post-fight week and all that stuff? Yeah, it's been good. And I've been uh, finally back in Vegas. You know, I, I usually go straight back to Canada after my fights. Uh, this time I just came straight back here. This is home now. Um, and it was nice, you know, being here, but not in camp, you know, get to relax a little bit, indulge in some food and uh, just in and out of the gym a little bit, you know, see, seeing everybody and getting congratulated and all that, you know, it's been nice. Um, but then I leave tomorrow back to BC for uh, the holidays and whatnot. And then I'm right back out here and get right back into the grind. All right, my man. Sounds very, sounds like a very well time to get off as you deserve it. Yeah, yeah. I want to fight every <laughs> early December. You know, if I can fight the first week of December every year, I'm cool with that. You know, <laughs> that's amazing. Man. You had a pretty active year this year. Um, I don't know if you remember me, but I remember interviewing back in PFL a couple years ago. Okay. And uh, I know you just signed with Bellator and you've been active three fights in Bellator and also a stint on Submission Underground. Talk to me about your activity this year. Yeah, man, I just, I've been, you know, the, the fights were good. Um, I had a little bit of a, a layoff from April till now, um, just waiting for a fight, you know, so I just was jumping into the grappling scene, you know, I did uh, submission underground, but then I did, I also did a few other uh, grappling competitions. One was a tournament and then one was a super fight in uh, Sacramento. The, uh, there was a tournament here in Vegas that I, uh, I won and it was a cash bracket. I was pretty much just trying to to make some money grappling, you know, so whoever was willing to pay, I was willing to grapple. And uh, I did Art Suave in Sacramento against Eric Sanchez. That was actually the end of October. So just right before I got into like hard camp, you know, I kind of wanted to do it just because Sanchez, you know, he's a jiu-jitsu guy off of his back and he's going to be throwing up subs. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to compete in, in jiu-jitsu as much as I can leading up to this one. Um, before you know the heavy training camp kind of start so it was nice you know I had three grappling matches and two fights in 2021 and um, capping off the year strong with a big win and wait and see what happens uh, next year that's amazing man I was getting ready to ask you that too like did you feel that doing those grappling tournaments and went against a guy like Sanchez really helped and should fighters can uh, insist themselves with doing that yeah, I mean, I don't see why why fighters wouldn't, you know, if you can be able to put your ego aside and realize it's not MMA, it's just jujitsu and you're grappling against guys who only grapple and that's their thing. And, you know, I, however many days a week I can grapple where these guys, that's all they do, you know, so if I can go and compete at the highest level of that, um, it's just going to do nothing but better my MMA game. And I, I felt confident in there um, being, get those like, you know, competition nerves and, and just uh, the different type of looks that these, these grapplers give you, you know, um, it, it can't make it worse, you know, so why not? If it doesn't work for you, it's all good, but at least try, you know, it's not gonna, doesn't affect your record. It doesn't do anything. It's just, it's a, it's better than a training session to me is the way I looked at it, you know? So I was go out there, put myself out there, get uncomfortable. And uh, I think it paid off. I felt great in there against Sanchez. Oh, that's good, man. And, um, you know, going, we're going to talk about it, uh, the fight in a little bit, but I wanted to ask one more thing with jujitsu related. Do we plan on seeing you in a combat jujitsu sometime in 2022? <laughs> I don't know. They have to pay me pretty good for that to get, <laughs> you know, go out there getting smacking around. I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, I, I like, I like all type of the grappling scene and, and this coming year, this 2020, I plan to really bump that up, you know, and try to compete as much as I can. Um, but I don't know about combat. You know, that one's a little, it's too in between, you know, for me. I'm like, I'll get mad some dudes took palm striking me or something, you know. So that and bare knuckle fighting, I'm like not interested in. Oh, I totally understand, man. And yeah. to your to your fight with Manuel Sanchez, um, tough guy. He fought in the Featherweight Grand Prix, fought for the title as his last fight. You know, when you got this matchup and the way you dominated him, like what was going through your mindset and your game plan for that fight? Yeah, like, uh, he was a dude that I knew as soon as I signed with Bellator that I was going to end up fighting eventually. You know, he's been around forever. He's probably like the longest running featherweight outside of Pitbull and maybe Wychill. You know, like those three are just the top. Those are just staples, Bellator guys, you know. Um, so I knew I was going to face them. And when I got this this call, I was excited, man. I thought I matched up great with him. 
I, I was helping Mads get ready for the fight back in July when he fought Sanchez. So I was like, I kind of knew the blueprint essentially of, of where I would have a lot more success. Um, and I think that that route was, you know, the grappling heavy wrestling was going to be a big difference. And, and on the feet, just staying calm, you know, he, he was a little too over aggressive, which made the takedowns easier. Um, and I would have liked to strike a little bit more, but it's, it's really hard when a dude's just, you know, running at you, throwing punches that it's just, it was a simple level changes. We're able to take them down and control them pretty easily there. And uh, yeah, once you find that success, you know, it's pretty easy to go back to the well each round, you know, and rinse and repeat and get a 30, 27 big dub. And uh, you know, the, the rankings came on, I was a little upset about that, but it's all good. You know, I, I'm still raising, you know, number seven now and uh big 2022 yeah man um like you said you put on a great performance but i can agree a lot of people were like shocked that you weren't at least in the top five yeah, or even above sanchez that's what i don't yeah know. so it's like you fought a top five guy i this is why people hate the rankings <laughs> yeah, like it doesn't matter to me i get, I get paid the same i fight the, the fights it doesn't affect it it's uh it's a status thing really right now and uh unless you're you're fighting for the title but that number between your name is pretty interchange interchangeable um i think once they start making these i mean there's no bellator card in the next month or so but once they they update the rankings i think they'll kind of fix it and realize that hey i should i gotta be above the dude i just beat <laughs> yeah so we'll see i mean i'm not sweating it but it's all good yeah for sure and um 2022 man like what matchups excite you of course i've and hearing when you know you wanted to fight uh Pedro Carvalho because you guys have had some back and forth but other from that is like is that the main one or like any other fights like top five like appeases you yeah that's the one that really is uh, I would love you know he, mm -hmm. he seems like he he wants nothing to no part of it you know so I I'm not going to chase him around forever um that's the one you know the Borix rematch is always there I really want that one I don't think they'll give that to me right away I think I still got a little bit of work to do uh, but that one's always in my sights and I, I want to still keep getting these legends, man. I, I want, I want, um, why chill? You know, I know he's, he just lost his last one, but he's only ranked. I think he's right below me. He's eight. I'm seven. Um, I don't have to chase the, 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 the top five right now. It seems like there's such a log jam up there. We don't really know what's, what's happening with the belt. Yeah. If the rematch is going to happen, if, if Borks is going to get the, the title shot, like who, no one really knows. So, I mean, I'm not, I just want to stay busy and I'm, I'm cool with fighting down the rankings too. I just want somebody in the top 10. I don't care coming off of a win, a loss, doesn't matter. I just fought the number four and it moved me up two spots. So I'm, I'm not really worried about it. I'm, I can fight eight, nine, 10, whatever it is. So I just kind of want to stay busy. I want to get first quarter of the year, you know, January, February, March, something like that. All right, cool. And, um, you know, to the statement to your camp, um, shout out to Shane Couture, my boy, Eric Nixick, like yeah. talk to me that culture that you guys have, because you guys had a very, very wonderful December and you guys, that same weekend, everybody won. And yeah. Yeah. that, the, that name, because when people see gyms, they talk about American top team or they talk about, um, it's not the popular camp. I can never think about popular camp, but yeah. Extreme yeah. Couture, Jackson yeah. Wink. Yeah. But extreme couture, like talk to me about this culture that you guys have going and the champions. It, it's vintage, you know, it's been around forever, but it hasn't really got the the recognition, you know. And then just I would say the last few years now, it's really been coming coming up. And uh yeah, it, I'm I'm honored to be a part of it, you know, part of the the core group. Um, we got the heavyweight champ in the house, you know, we got we got we got a lot of good guys across all the weight classes, you know, and it seems like there's fights every weekend somebody's fighting you know and we had a we had a big december but that's pretty much over now and now we, we we're looking at a big january you know so it's it, it we got tons of fights there's always guys in the mass and, and then especially with the pi and the the state of vegas right now as being this just hub you always got different bodies coming in and people that get along great with us you know it's it's not like it's a no ego gym so we always have new guys and guys who are in the UFC who are just stopping by the PI or whatever, just in town because there's fights. Um, they'll, they'll be coming through and we always get different looks that way. And everyone's, it's not like it's uh, animosity or anything. It's just open arms and open, yeah. open gym doors, man. It, it's the way we've kind of always been it. And so it's, you get a lot of different looks, you get a lot of networking, see different bodies all the time year round. So it's, it's been awesome. 
That's amazing, man. Um, I know your teammate Kai Kamaka just joined the Bellator uh, yeah. uh, family. Did you guys uh, help each other prepare for your fights? Oh, yeah, man. He's he's one of my main training partners. You know, both the same size, 45ers, younger guys, hungry. Um, so we were always grinding and pushing each other. And uh, so when he got when he got signed, it was awesome, man. I was like, we're going to take this division by storm, you know, and he ended up getting on the first, his first card was, you know, the, we're fighting on the same night, which was awesome. And uh, yeah, we're going to get back into it. I think he's going to do big things too. Um, I'm excited to see what they do with him and he's going to crack these top 10 pretty quick here. Um, just a couple more fights and uh, yeah, we're taking this 145 division over, man. Oh man, that's dope. And um, like you said, you've had champions people come by. Like I know the Bantamweight champion of the UFC, Aljamain Sterling, has been yeah, there a couple of times. Yeah. yeah. Have you like has he like helped incorporate you in his camp for the prepare for the rematch with Pierre de Jan? Have you guys like ever worked together by the chance? Yeah, no, we 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 worked together a bit mm-hmm. when he's been in town, you know, he even long before the the first fight with Jan. Um, you know, some wrestling and jiu-jitsu and whatever pro practice is at extreme i've seen him at 10th planet and worked with him at the pi a little bit but nothing too specific uh i don't think i'm quite the look for for peter Jan. Um, <laughs> but i can give I, I give him good work but yeah i think he's uh i don't really know what his plan is for this this upcoming camp if he's going to do it out here or back in new york or mm-hmm. where he's going to be or what he's going to do you know so um but yeah, he's he's an awesome guy. He's good guy to have in the gym, and he's a good body, outside of you know fight specific sparring and stuff like that. But good rounds of wrestling, grappling, and, and everything like that too. Yeah, and another thing I I saw was, was in your gym culture. You know, you guys emphasize being a good training partner. Can you yeah. tell those, and no matter what competitive sport that they're in or sport, what it means to be a good teammate or a good training partner? Good teammate, good trainer. Like our biggest thing is just trying to get back in the gym right away after you fought. You know, it's everyone leading up to your fight. You're just you're you're living in the gym, and all these training partners are helping you out. And then it's their turn, and you fight, and you're gone. You know, so it's it's an emphasis to you know really try to get back into the gym right away, help these guys out when it's not your turn, right? Like I just fought, and I was back in the gym helping guys out whose fights are coming up now, and it doesn't matter. Like a lot of guys like to take time off and disappear, you know, and then come back when it's fight time again. Right. But it's just being a good teammate, being there year round, day in, day out, helping these guys out and whoever's up next gets the priority, you know, gets the focus. It doesn't matter where you are and in what organization or whatever it is. If you're up next, you know, let's, let's be a good training partner, a good guy and support this guy and give him everything he needs, you know, leading up to it. And then, right when you fight get right back in here and and help everybody out the next guy out because there's always somebody else coming up oh man that's that's amazing the consistency and the hard work um and i saw the the slogan you guys have rents do so that's uh (laughs) so that's dope there are the slogan rents do (laughs) (laughs) absolutely (laughs) um oh man i forgot that's what i thought i had to bring for it um Of course, uh, previously you joined Bellator, you fought in PFL. How has the organization's been different? And since joining Bellator, did you feel like it took your career on the trajectory you needed? And was PFL anyway, fighting PFL, help that trajectory? I think everywhere, you know, with even starting in the UFC, um, fighting there, fighting in PFL, um, it's all kind of just led me to where I'm at now. Um, Bellator has gave me the right trajectory to do trajectory you know give me a, a co-main event slot last fight against you know top five ranked guy long time guy um they they see the value in me and that's what i love you know and i i'm excited to to grow with with bellator you know i'm only 29 i've been fighting for a long time now over 20 pro fights all over you know the world and organization and uh bellator i just love the featherweight division i love the competitive i, I love where where i'm at you know it's I size myself up with all these, these guys in the top 10 and I'm just excited, like genuinely excited to see what name gets put across my, my desk essentially. And uh, what, what they, what, what they have next for me. And uh, just back to back giving me Borix at, I think he was ranked third and then Sanchez ranked at fourth. It's, it just shows you what they see in me, you know, that I belong up there and uh, I'm one of the top featherweights in the division. And uh, yes, yeah, you know, that title shots looming. And um, I think 
everywhere. I, I'm, I'm here at the right time. I'm not too young, not too old. I'm coming right into my prime and I have all that experience behind me already. And with all these different organizations, I know how different promotions run and everything. And Bellator's just been from fight week to all around just, you know, top notch. So I'm, I, I love it. That's dope, man. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, before I let you go, I ask you a very funny question. Have yeah, yeah. you grappled with Francis Ngannou yet? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I stay away from him, bro. He's he's funny, man. He always, I always see different guys trying to jump on him and take him down, and two flyweights or whatever, a featherweight and a bantamweight, and I'm like, you know, what? I don't want any of those problems. <laughs> I see let people rip body shots on them. I'm like, you know what? I'm not messing with any of that. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that's too. <dope. Yeah. laughs> uh, well. Before I let you go, uh, you want to let people know where they could find you on yeah, yeah. that? Yeah, um, pretty much all my all my content, you know, comes out of uh, Instagram, Jeremy Kennedy one forty five. Uh, Twitter a little bit, you know, I've been a little bit more on the sports betting side of things over there. So if you're into that kind of stuff, uh, Jeremy Kennedy WC. Uh, but yeah, man, that's that's about it. Uh, lots of content coming up these next uh, few weeks. So make sure you check me out. All right, man. Thank you for your time again. Hope to have you back on soon. My man, thank you very much. Bro, have a good one.